Even if you don't brew beer, hops are a great plant to have in a home landscape. They are such tough plants, they are almost weeds, but they will do better with a little help to prune and train them in the spring. In this video, I'm going to share three reasons for pruning your hop shoots in the spring. I'll follow that up by sharing some tips about how to be the most effective at pruning your hop plants. If you understand these three reasons, you'll be able to take good care of your hop plants and you'll be able to get the most out of the hop plants that you have. Home hop growers have some real advantages over commercial operations, so I hope you'll stick around for the whole video and be able to have a great crop of hops in your future. And if you have buddies that grow hops, I know they'll appreciate it if you share this video with them because folks that grow hops like their plants. Hey, welcome to Haphazard Homestead. I'm Holly Chris and I grow hops. At the end of this video, I'll link you to my whole playlist on growing and using hops. If you're new to my channel and like growing plants or foraging for wild plants, please consider subscribing. And if you're already a subscriber, thanks for stopping by again. I'm glad you're here and I want to know if you grow hops. Now let's hop over to the hops and look at reason number one for pruning hop shoots in the spring. And that's to increase your yield of the hop cones in late summer. The goal is to focus your hop plant's energy on making hop flowers and cones. Those first shoots in the spring are the bull shoots. Their job is to run and spread that hop plant. Their goal is to cover a lot of distance and set roots. So there's a long distance between the nodes where the leaves come out. But think about how a crop of hops grows. The flowers that turn into hop cones grow on side shoots from the nodes. So the closer those nodes are, the bigger your hop cone yields can be. And here's something else about those early shoots. They are hollow. It's easy for them to kink and snap and then you have a busted bind and that's no good. And note that I said hop bind with a B and not vine with a V. That's a botanical distinction about how hops wrap around things like a boa constrictor and not using tendrils like a grapevine. I want to thank Frisky O'Callaghan for pointing that out in the comments on my last hop video. Anyway, back to the hop binds. If you cut off all the bull shoots, the later shoots that come up are not hollow. They're a lot stronger, and there's a lot shorter empty space on the binds too. So your hop binds will be stronger, and you'll have more side shoots that bear your hop cones. So your yield will be higher. Here's reason number two for pruning your hop shoots in the spring, and that is disease prevention. Pruning will cut down on the risk and severity of two big diseases that afflict hop shoots in the spring. That's downy mildew and powdery mildew. Even though powdery mildew and downy mildew are not related, both overwinter down underground in the buds of next year's growth, that is, in the tips of the shoots that come up in the spring. Now commercial growers, to be efficient, come through once or twice with machines to cut off all those buds before they should come up out of the ground, or they spray the vegetation to kill it back. And that's where we as home growers have a real advantage. We get to take advantage of reason number three for pruning hop shoots in the spring. And that is to eat the hop shoots. Yep, eat those hop shoots. I think hop plants are worth growing just for those spring shoots. They are really delicious. I've got a card up here in the corner that'll go to my video that shows you five ways to eat hop shoots. Most commercial hop growers can't afford to harvest their hop shoots because it has to be done by hand. But as home hop growers, we can watch over our hops and harvest those shoots all through the spring. So here are some tips for pruning your hop shoots to take care of your plants and to get the most out of them over the growing season. When you first see those earliest shoots, cut them off. It's okay to cut them off below ground level where the shoots are white and tender and great for making pickled hop shoots. As the spring progresses, just keep cutting those shoots, especially if the weather conditions are just right for powdery mildew or downy mildew. That's any time temperatures are above 40 degrees Fahrenheit and the soil is wet, especially if cloudy and overcast conditions down and there's high humidity down around the hop vegetation. If any of the shoots that you cut look stunted or wilted or have a white coating or look weird in any way, cut them and get rid of them. 
but if the shoots look healthy and in good condition, they are just fine to eat. Keep cutting all of the shoots, every one, until three or four weeks before you want to train the hop vines up their support. Do the last pruning and harvest of shoots when you're selecting the three or four binds to train to grow up your supports. For all of the other binds that you haven't selected to grow up your support, break their tips off to eat and then cut the rest of them all down to ground level. So your season can last a long time. This year I started pruning on February 26th and then did my last pruning when I trained my hop binds on May the 3rd. Over the course of the spring season, there can be a lot of hop shoots to harvest. You can eat your hop shoots right after you harvest them, or you can freeze them, or get a couple jars ready to make pickled hop shoots. Put your harvest of a few shoots at a time in the pickle jar. That's easy. So now you're ready to prune your hop shoots in the spring to increase your harvest of hop cones, protect your hop plants from disease, and enjoy a springtime bonus harvest of hop shoots. If you have any tips for growing hops, let us all know down in the comments below. Happy hop growing! Thanks for watching! Bye!